Hello everyone and welcome to this new sample library review. I wanted to make this a first look video where together with you we open up the library for the very first time and then just record my very first findings. But I thought this library was bigger <laughs> than it actually is. So I opened it up and then decided okay let's pick some favorites first and play through those afterwards. And it turns out the library isn't too big in terms of patches and stuff. I was expecting the patches to be like many of them. <laughs> Turns out that's not the case. Today we're taking a second look at Tommy Profit Percussion by Cinematic Tools, a library that you might not even have on your radar. It's a really, really new percussion library, just came out a month ago, and I'm going to tell you all about it, about its accessibility. I will show you its sound, at least partially. And yeah, so stay tuned if you're interested in some epic trailer percussion. Here we are in front of Tommy Profit Percussion. The library, when I bought it, was available for something about 150 I think 149 and it was on intro sale. So I think if you buy it on new, which is probably right now, and you don't get a sale or something like that, it's 199 So it was $50 off, I think. Now, what is that library? Well, it's the sound of Tommy Prophet, one of the people who are most famous for trailer and hard hitting percussion heavy music. And he created together with Cinematic Tools, um, a developer who have another library from, which is Synth, which I might actually review it another day. Um, they are doing a lot of cinematic trailer stuff. Um, Zenith was their first release, I think. It isn't even in case ready. It's a good old contact, full only library with a lot of patches. It comes as WAV format too, if you want to. So you can load it into whichever sampler. And it has everything for your trailer needs. It has razors, downers, it has FX, sub booms, booms, all, all this kind of whooshes, all, everything you can think of. And now they released Tommy Profit Percussion, which is a dedicated percussion library. It's a contact player and contact full library. It's registered in native access and it's their first, as far as I know, NKS ready library. So I decided there isn't anything that could go wrong. Let's pick it up. So I did. And I opened it up for the first time just 10 minutes ago or something, and I wanted to check it out. And holy moly, this thing blew my socks off. If you want to watch a video that basically just summarizes it instead of just playing it through and demonstrating it to you in, in a non or as cut as less as possible scenario, then feel free to check out the video from Kevin Kuschel. I will link him in the video description. He basically brought it to my attention as well. Like I, I received a mail from them, obviously, and I checked out the, the demos, but I thought just another trailer percussion library, which is awesome, obviously, but I already have a few of them. And then I watched his video and I was really impressed by what the library can do. So I decided to pick it up myself. And here I am in front of the library. And as I said, I expected it to be Really comprehensive and i don't know for sure and i will be honest with you if everything is mapped out just fine in complete control anyway this library comes in five patches drums cymbals loops rolls and effects it doesn't sound much but especially in the drum section and in the loops and everything the entire keyboard is used so i've got a 61 keyboard the a61 to be exact and for me, the entire keyboard is used. So you've got roughly about 60 keys on every patch that trigger individual sounds. So that's something, right? Let's start with the drums. I've loaded the drums up here already and I will just play you this and this is, this is spicy.
so here's one thing that I already found. Like you've got the, the bassy drums, the re reverberating drums. You can play them at different velocity intensities, which is great. You can play them like this, and you play them like this. This is a huge range, right? So Mod V and Pitch V don't do anything. There's another thing, and that is this. Compare this to this. Or even better, compare this to this. The reverb tail seems to be rather inconsistent. Like, there are certain bass drums that have a really intense reverb tail, and that is because they're loud, right? Makes sense. Uh, but then you've got this. Subtle on tiny instruments. Like this one starts to ring out a little bit more, but... Especially this one's really dry, right? Doesn't sound like it was recorded in the exactly the same room. That might be a part of his signature sound, but to me it feels a little bit inconsistent. Nothing that a tiny bit of additional reverb couldn't fix. Just wanted to point it out. It might be worth putting this thing onto additional track and putting those out onto different tracks so they can apply additional specific effects to it so that it fits better into those really bassy things. Like, those sticks here, they'll start to ring out even better. Let's move on to the cymbals, because they are on an additional patch. In contradiction to the drums, which basically you hit them once and there they bring out, the cymbals will get cut off as soon as you release the key. That's certainly a release sample. So you will basically mute them as soon as you release the key, which is something that you need to get used to. If you don't want this, it's something to, to note. There are not too many cymbals here. That's by far the smallest patch. Like you've got a tiny bit above one octave, but all those keys are used. Like black and white keys are used to play samples and hi-hats and stuff. That's the cymbals for you. Let's move on to the loops. And let me tell you, this, this thing is packed full of them and you've got them separated into like bass drum loops you've got middle tom loops and you've got the tiny uh, up clickers and and all those kind of things um sticks and stuff let's start with the lower ones and show you one or two of them pretty simple right because it's, it's bass drums you don't do intense stuff with them i like intense yes but not much Now here's a way of getting into the middle range and into the toms. Let's put them together and you will see where the loop engine starts to, to do their magic. Like you, you just stack loops and that's that's easy and, and nice. Now you need to press them simultaneously, which I obviously cannot do. <laughs> Sorry for that. Let's, let's put those two together and see what we can do with the higher loops here. And even now we're better than me <laughs> in terms of playing um, the keyboard or you had more than two hands, you could now add another layers to, to this thing. The only thing that I noticed, and you might need to tweak this, uh, the loops will stop immediately. They won't ring out. So you will have to apply reverb manually. You definitely hear that it's not ringing out there, so you will have to tweak that manually, I guess. Or you just let it go when it's time to let go, like when the ring out just happened, like this one. But if you've got a busy 
percussion loop and you just let go of all the keys at the same time, we will just not ring out, it will just get cut off. So that's about the loops. And there are some crazy loops in here, let me tell you. That would sound much better if I could keep timing. You get the idea, right? These are the loops. Let's continue. These are the rolls. Let's see what they do. So you've got all kinds of different sizes of drums, except the really high ones. Uh, those are not meant to roll, I guess. You've got different lengths of rolls, and all of those have the thing, again, where they will not ring out. So if you release the key, you will cut them off. However, I think this, in this case, that's not too bad, because usually you want the roll to ring out anyway, right? And since it's not a loop, you can just leave the key longer than necessary and just release them as soon as the reverbs ended. And... With, with the loop, that would be a problem because the loop would start over again, right? But with roads, I don't think that is actually a problem. That's a design choice. It would be nice to have them ring out automatically so that it can just quickly hit the key and get the entire roll. But, I mean, this is more freedom. Uh, in the case that you actually want to cut off roll for whatever reason, for design choices, you can do that. So that's... That's useful. If you had a library that would always ring out, you'd have to sample it into a, a sound that it can just split and, and you know, all of this stuff. So it's it's something, it's, it's an additional feature that can be useful to someone. It's here. If you want it, go grab it. Let's get to the last thing. And that is the trailer effects. And again, there's a lot here. Sub booms, right? Really useful, tiny things. Awesome. And then there are those. Tiny whoosh-like sub-booms. Now we're getting into the not even sub-booms, but booms and hits range. So these are really, really useful if you're into trailer stuff. Just a nice mixture of different trailer hits and things like that. There's one more thing that I want to talk about, and this is the parameters on those knobs. For the drums, we do have microphone positions, which are mapped. So you can just dial them in up or down. You can even make them louder than 0 dB, which is not something that all libraries do. Uh, so in this case, you can dial them up to plus 10 dB, and they would just... Basically, make your door clip. So be careful with that, but you can also dial them up, and which means that you basically mute them. You've got close, you've got room mics and stuff. Let's go back to the drums. We've got the uh, close mics. Let's let's say the drum first. So we've got close uh, close mics, right? If we now dial this up, we sound like this. Just really far away. And we apply to all drums. So you can definitely hear them coming in, but there's another thing that you can definitely hear, which is not the close, but the room mic. Let's dial that one out. We sound much more present without the room mics, right? We also got a hall mic. It's 
So this is basically the reverb. And that is really useful. You've got compression for all mics individually. So if I wanted to compress just the close mics, let's see what happens. That will make them much more intense, but I can also compress the room mics. Now the reverb is really intense because that's the room, basically, right? So this is what I can do. Then there's envelopes. So you have the typical things like ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release. And you've got main controls, which is nice to have because you've got a high pass and low pass right bit into the engine, but you also got a big knob. Let's see what, what this does because this is this is interesting. I think it's a mixture of adding overdrive, a little bit of bit crushing or not bit crushing, but distortion and compression to the thing at the same time. And it's just called the big knob. So it will make it bigger. It will make it impactful. And I think it's applied after the compression. So this is, this is now going to get uh, weird. This is with roughly 50%. Let's start it up to 100. So this is totally over the top, right? But might be useful for some circumstances. You've got a general loudness mixer, you've got a gain level, gain knob, you've got pitch and you've got panning. So you can pitch it up, which is a weird choice, I guess. Interesting choice because the pitch wheel itself doesn't do that. So that's that's a design choice, I guess. This is on the drums. The loops, however, don't have a microphone position. So you just get the envelope settings and the main controls, and that's it. I really like the intense sound. Like it's really picking a punch. You can dial it up, you can compress it directly within the library. So that is nice for a straight forward workflow where you want to streamline everything with incomplete control. So if you are a person who likes to do as much as possible in complete control, this library could be worth checking out. I really, really like the sound. I think by reading what the website says and by watching Kevin's video, which I will again link in the video description, go check it out if you want to get a second opinion. I think there's more in this library and we just have to find out how to access it. I think it's snapshots, but I'm not 100% sure. They say that they have got 250 plus loops and obviously I've got just 60 keys and even if all of them are used, these are not 250 loops. There's one more thing that we cannot access though and I want to be honest with you, if you don't want to pay for something that you cannot entirely use, that's totally fine. That's why I'm telling you. There are 16 different FX modules built into this library which via the UI you can apply to the FX chain and dial them in and out and do whatever you want. However, this is impossible to do via complete control. They are not mapped to the NKS slots. So that is definitely a downer. Not all of this is accessible and that is sad. They could have done this better. So that is worth to know that you don't get everything accessible if you pay full price for it. I really like the library. I can recommend it because I like especially the thing where you don't have to layer epic trailer percussion if you don't want to. Usually you'd get libraries that just give you bass drums and jam bass and all the kind of different drums. And what you'd need to do in order to achieve the really hard hitting epic trailer percussion sound is layer them just like I already did in another video that is on my channel. I will link that in the video description as well. And this library claims to just fix that. It will just give you drums which are already layered they will already put two or three drums together so that you just have to press two or three keys on your keyboard on your patch and it will just start to sound epic and i think it does that actually pretty well so if that is something that you want to have basically a quick and easy access to some basic epic intense percussion that library might be the one you're looking for if you are on the side that you say all i want to buy should be 100% accessible. That doesn't seem to be the case here. At least the different effects don't seem to be accessible. I, however, think that 
usually you would have effects like that available within your arsenal anyway. You've got distortion, at least partially available in Reaper for free. You've got different effects around compression limiting available in Reaper. You've got overdrive, you've got things like EQs available in Reaper. There are other plugins out there which are free or paid. The entire Sound Toys box, which I cannot recommend, if you're interested in watch me do a review about that, let me know in the comment section below the video. But this entire Sound Toys engine has so many effects that are on par, if not even better, with everything that Contact can come up with. So I don't think that this is too big of a problem, but for full transparency, it's important to know that you won't get access to that if you rely on accessibility features like NKS. Apart from that, especially the loops are great if you just want to get started and you need basically a Kickstarter for your project, pull up one of the loops and I'm pretty sure you will be happy with the result. The effects seem to be crazy. I hope there are more of them, especially in Zenith, there are more of them. And I'm pretty sure there are in here too. You just have to find them via snapshots or whatever. But uh, yeah, so overall, I like the library. It is pretty intense in terms of price though. So 200 bucks for a library like this. If that is all you get, that might not be worth it for you. I personally don't regret getting it, but I also paid just 75% of the price. So yeah, what can I say? Are there comparable ones? Well, I've already reviewed Cerberus by Audio Imperia, and uh, this library is pretty damn thick too. Give it a watch, link in the video description. And that's it for today's sample library review. I tried a slightly different approach. Last time I knew what the libraries do, I played them through and I basically gave you an overview. And this time we basically jumped into it and we were trying to find out what we can find. I obviously cut things because putting this up uncut to just make it too long. And there were sections where I was not saying anything in S3 manuals. I, however, thought that doing something like this as a live stream would be kind of a nice idea. And I have a catalog that just reaches really, really big. So if you're interested in just sitting together with me in a stream and basically watch me unbox, so to speak, sample libraries and just give them a, a go and see what they come up with, then let me know in the comment section below the video and I will maybe figure something out. If you've got a different idea about a sample library that you want to see me review, let me know in the comment section and let me know what you like better. This kind of head first dive into a library and see what we come up with approach or a more processed kind of approach where I basically think about what I'm going to do before recording. Tell me so that I know what I should do more in the future. Thanks for watching anyway. Until next time and bye bye.